Brother lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. These are your player ratings for Arsenal 1, Leicester City 0 at the King Power. Arsenal safely on top of the table, although Manchester City have won their game by four goals to nail. But we will not care. We are still on top of the Premier League. Hit the like button, subscribe to the podcast as well. And we're going to be marking every player out of 10. Who was your man of the match? In the comment box below, let me know. But mark every player out of 10 with me in this video, right? So let's get into it. Um, in goal, Aaron Ramsdale didn't have much a lot to do, to be honest. Um, and I thought in this game, he was the only player that didn't have uh, any action. I think he was bored. I think it was very, very boring from, Le uh, from Leicester City. Now, I don't blame people who call the, the Leicester City way of playing football today um, anti-football. It was boring. It was absolutely, you know, lack of initiative, not even creative at all. I don't think they really had any go on goal. Look, did, did he have any saves? In this game, apart from the distribution that he made to Alexander Zichenko just to fasten up things, that's the only thing I saw Aaron Ramsdale do in this game. Maybe taking a few a, a few goal kicks as well. Didn't even waste time. I mean, we know he's good at wasting time, but today didn't even waste time. So Ramsdale, out of 10, let's go with the 7 out of 10. I would have given more than that because he's a clean sheet um, from a very, very long time. He's not kept a clean sheet since... Has he? When did he last keep a clean sheet? At the White Hart Lane against Tottenham Hotspur. That is when he last kept uh, a clean sheet. But to be honest, I can't give him more than seven. He's not done much. Ramsdale, seven out of ten. Ben White today was a little bit better than, um, than all the performances I've always seen him. And I'm the guy who always complains about Ben White. But to be honest, today, I don't think I'm complaining. Now, a few people are going to be jumping onto his back because of... Um, uh, the foul on Dan uh, on um on on Danny Ward. I don't think that was um I don't think that was really a big foul. That was a very very short foul. I think VAR decided to uh, screw up Arsenal again. They also decided decided to protect the goalkeeper. And I think as early as it was in the game, they decided not to go uh, controversial in the game. They just decided to go with the easy option, which is look at the foul. Is it co is there contact between? Uh, ben White and the goalkeeper, protect the goalkeeper in his penalty area and move on. But the rest of the game, I thought Ben really, really, really played very well, uh, helping us into, you know, tapping into the midfield um, uh, as well. I thought the right-hand side didn't actually bring a lot of uh, a lot of action to the game, Saka and White. But in terms of game management, Ben White did very, very well. So you get a 7 out of 10 from me, Ben. Uh, good performance. If you can put that against, uh, putting that against Everton, putting that against Bournemouth, that means we will be absolutely uh, flying. Now, on the left hand side, Alexander Zichenko um, could be a potential man of the match. According to Sofusco, he's one of the players that actually played very well. Actually, there is no better player with a better rating on Sofasco for Arsenal than uh, Alexander Zichenko. And I explained the role of Alexander Zichenko in this game. He's done it absolutely brilliantly. That guy plays like a midfielder. And not just like a midfielder, like, you know, playing as, um, as a C CM or defensive midfielder. He plays as a central midfielder, box-to-box, -box, attacking midfielder, defensive midfielder. He literally is always everywhere. And to be honest, I'm going to give credit to everyone who played on the on the left hand side today. There was more life. The goal came from the left hand side. Um, I thought Martinelli was brilliant, especially in the in, in those few minutes in the second half. I thought Trossard was absolutely brilliant, drifting to the left. Xhaka was a little bit better, and Alexander Zichenko played very well. So, Alexander Zichenko, let's go with an eight out of ten. I thought he really, really played very, very well. Uh, the centre-back pairing, Gabriel first and foremost. Um, I think the better of them was Saliba, but Gabriel was solid, okay? Because with uh, with Leicester, they always have those runners in, in, in Harvey Barnes. They always have those runners in... Uh, uh, in, in Tete, those extra runners in Praye, um, and they're always looking to cause a lot of, uh, a lot of problems and trouble. And then when Jamie Vardy came on, and then Passon Duck as well, uh, you thought you might have a little bit of action and problems for them. But I thought Gabriel today was absolutely brilliant. Very, very firm. His decision-making was a little bit better, to be honest. 
his decision making was a little bit better than um in the manchester city game okay so he gets an eight out of ten william saliba nine out of ten that was a good performance yeah that was a very very good performance from william saliba and that is what i know him for like you put him one against one against a player like harvey Barnes, who has speed he's gonna outrun him you put him one against one against a player like Kelly Tinacho, who loves to drift inside, uh, have, has that power to hold up play. He's going to outmaster him. That is the William Saliba I know. This must be his best game ever since Manchester United. Could we say that? Ever since the Manchester United game, uh, this could be William Saliba's best game uh, ever since then. So, Saliba 9 out of 10, Gabriel Magales 8 out of 10, but not because Gabriel was shaky. It's just because I thought Saliba had more uh, particular tasks to do. And he actually did them very, very well. Now, let's get to the midfield, right? Let's get to the midfield. Where I thought the game was controlled. And where I predicted the game would be won and controlled as well. So, Giorgino, masterclass. Absolute masterclass from, Ole, uh, from uh, Giorgino, right? This was his best game in an Arsenal jersey. This was his best game. Like, I looked at him, the leadership coming out, the instructions coming out, directing play, and did you see that pass he made before halftime in the first half to look for Saka? Did you see that pass? Put some respect on Gigino's name. I thought defensively was also very, very good, uh, making sure that Leicester City don't have any kind of build-up in midfield. Um, whenever they try to create something, Gigino was there to disrupt it. He was throwing himself into challenges as well. I thought it was really, really good. So Gigino, 8.5. Well, I mean, right, and, and I. I mean, he should, he should get a, a, a 9. If anyone gives him a 9, I would be okay with that. In the comment section, let me know. But I'll give him an 8.5 because I know... He can do better, but best midfielder for me, uh, for us today. Granit Xhaka, a little bit better than um, he was in the last three, four appearances for Arsenal. I still think he needs that decisiveness in the, you know, around the penalty area. When he's running, he, he's got to decide, do I shoot? Do I uh, release uh, Trossard or Gabriel Martinelli? I've seen now three occasions... It's now on three occasions. He's received that opportunity. He's got that opportunity outside the penalty area on his strong left foot. He can shoot. He can release Martinelli. Or he can pass it inside uh, to Edin Ketia or Martin Odegaard who are, who are always arriving um, in the penalty area. He does nothing of those. He just gets stranded and he passes the ball behind. Uh, I don't know why he does that. I'm, I'm not really sure what is happening there, but um, I'll try to find out why he always does that. Probably he's, um, uh, you know, as, you know, he's taking a lot of time to assess his options. Okay, but today better, much, much better. More like the Jacker we know, more than more like the Jacker we like. Uh, the guy that always is on the penalty area, the guy that is always trying to uh, play the, the, those combination passes with Martinelli. Trossard or Gabriel Jesus, um, and then um, and, and then Giorgino as well. So Xhaka, 8 out of 10. Martin Odegaard, again, brilliant performance today. Absolutely brilliant. Look, I think Arsenal have a very, very good um, player in Martin Odegaard. We have a very, very good player in Martin Odegaard. I'm not actually surprised that he is captain for Arsenal at that age. Alexander Zichenko is Arsenal's third captain. Xhaka is our second. To be honest... Zichenko should be Odegaard's captain. Xhaka should be Od Odegaard's captain. But what I like about Odegaard he's, uh, is the spirit he has, the way he understands the game, the way he looks at the game. He's the only player in midfield, uh, and I think when Giorgino plays, him and Giorgino are the only two players in that midfield that always see a very different kind of picture. And that's why he always picks out those, you know, key passes. He has so many key passes in a game. He has so many progress, progressive passes in, uh, in, a, um, in, a, in a game per 90 and does all those brilliant things. Look at that pass he makes for uh, Martinelli. Martinelli is slightly offside. Slightly offside. But look at that pass. The quality of that pass, right? So, uh, in the second half. So, for me, already got 8 out of 10. I won't give him more than that. But he deserves a lot more better. He really, really does. So, Odegaard 8, Xhaka 8, and Gigino 8.5.
I just thought Gigino was the better of the three in midfield. Now, let's get to the front line because that is where a lot of action also uh, took place and a couple of changes that Mikel Arteta decided, decided to make. Let's start off with Gabriel Martinelli. Martinelli's first half was below par, below average. Like, if I'm rating him for his, his first half, three out of ten. Like, decision-making, absolutely horrendous. Took a lot of time on the ball. Took a lot of time to make the decisions. And when he made them, they were absolutely a shit house. The second half, though, was a little bit better. Actually, the second half was much, much better than the first half for Gabriel Martinelli. The way he takes the goal is absolutely brilliant. Abs Darwin Nunes doesn't score that, to be honest. Darwin Nunes does not score that. And I'm not t taking a dig to um, a dig at Liverpool players, okay? So, for me, Gabby Martinelli, good second half, poor first half. So, courtesy of that, I'm, and I know his level, and I'm the biggest fan of, fan of Gabby Martinelli, I'm going to judge him by myself because I'm the biggest fan of Martinelli at this club. I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. He scored a goal. He nearly made an assist for Saka if he wasn't offside. But I'm going to give him a 6 out of 10. He can do better than that. I believe in him. He's better than, all, you know, for me, he's better than any other player, uh, you know, talent-wise and in terms of ability in that squad. For me, he's better than any other player. But uh, he needs to up his game. He needs to level up, right? The past few games, including this one, have not been 10 out of 10 games for him. He needs to bet he needs to level up six out of ten it might be a little bit harsh but he is my player and that's why i will give him the rating that i feel um you know satisfies me but of course you can let me know in the comment box below uh liano trossard the pass for martinelli's goal is absolutely beautiful the patience the vision to make that to do that the class to do that his ability of course is never never in doubt undisputed uh, und undisputed um uh you know ability for me and i think you think about mikhail modric and i think about leandro trossard and you might go oh um, well arsenal a little bit lucky here that they got leandro trossard premier league proven he knows what to do uh you can see him he always has that you know urgency and you need it in the Premier League. It doesn't take a lot of time to think. It doesn't take a lot of time to decide. It doesn't take a lot of time to um, do the basics. And even when it goes for the hard stuff, like um, the goal he had scored, I, I think you know he does he does them brilliantly. I think he's unlucky. VAR cancel his goal because Danny Ward uh, is pushing his hand into Ben White. Like it's unlucky. But how good was this guy? How good was this guy, really? That front three looked like, a, it looked like it was a little bit more mobile when he was there. We were interchanging and switching positions when he was there. And I thought, although he didn't make those, he didn't make those runs in behind, he was magnificent. Very, very good. Nine out of ten for Leandro Trossard playing through the middle. He gives us an, uh, an option to... Edin Ketia, I love that. Okay, he gives us that. Uh, he gives that. Uh, gives us that extra option to Eddie Ketia. Bukayo Saka, quiet old game. Yes, quiet old game. And I know. Oh, Kosi, how can you say that? He's our best player. He's our star man. Yep, he's our star man. He's our best player. But it was quiet old game. To be honest, let's be honest. This time, Christiansen, the boy. Um, uh, at left back for Leicester City did a better job than Bukayo Saka. That is not the Bukayo Saka I know. You don't just keep, you just you don't just make him quiet, okay? And this is one of those games where Saka has been fouled very very little, like very few times. I thought Christiansen was brilliant. Um, look, Saka, he's he is allowed to have a bad game. I, in my opinion, he is allowed to have a bad game. And even when he has a bad game, he nearly scored. Even when he has a bad game, he nearly won a penalty. Even when he has a, a bad game, uh, he nearly uh, uh, got himself onto the assist uh, onto the assist sheet. So I don't think it's one of the worst games for Saka, but he can definitely do better against Everton. We will need him against Everton, all right? Uh, so Saka today, if it is a six for Martinelli, well, his shot number is seven. Let's give him a seven, okay? Let's give him a seven. Solid performance from 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 the team. They backed him very well. Let's give him a 7 um, and just go like that. So 7 out of 10 uh, for Saka. 
Okay. Uh, the substitutions, Thomas Partey and um, uh, Nketiah. Nketiah wasn't impressed when he came on. Three out of ten. I wasn't impressed with Eddie Nketiah. And this is not me taking a dig at Eddie. But, I mean, let me know. I'm going to let you to decide. Why are you impressed when Eddie came on? Like the way uh, Partey came on. Because Partey really created, created um, conversations in midfield. It really, you know, brought in uh, that spirit of fight and everything in midfield. With uh, Eddie... Maybe yes, maybe no. Okay, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, 83, Thomas Partey, 5 out of 10. Just for game management. Mikel Ateta, the manager, of course. He got this one spot on. Like, this is a game where you need to dominate. This is a game that's going to ask you to dominate. Uh, Leicester City came and said, can you dominate us? Can you play the way you want? Can you be all over us? And Mikel decided to go with the right tactics. Go and be on top of them. 90 minutes, show them who we are. We are Arsenal. We have come in your house and we are going to absolutely tear you apart. And we've done that. Um, look, I, I think when he looks at this team, he goes, I've created something here for a very, very long time. I might sit down and just enjoy the boys' uh, play. Look, this team needs a lot of um, changes. I think Rice comes into this team. I think we need a central midfielder into this team. I think we need a left winger in this team. I think we need a right back into this team. But so far, so good. Okay? So far, so good. So, Mikel Arteta, great job. Uh, winning back to back to back is a nice reaction. Especially winning away from home. Let's go, Mikel Arteta. It's a 10 out of 10, isn't it? He's won the last two. He's won this one uh, away comfortably. There was no point where I felt like at least I were about to score. Um, and his game management was also good. Didn't, he brought on Tomiyasu, by the way. Tomiyasu, uh, in my opinion, again, another 5 out of 10. Just for the rating. But I was impressed with Mikael today. 10 out of 10. Uh, it's the first time I'll give him a 10 out of 10 maybe. Or I've given him a 10, a 10 out of 10 before. But this one, I'll give him a 10 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts in the comment box below. And I'll surely speak to you right in the next one.